Hello, my name is Waikita Harrell. I'm Associate Head Coach of the New Orleans Women's Basketball Program. And I'm Brianna Ellis, and I'm a point guard for the University of New Orleans Women's Basketball Team. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you are, where you're from, and uh, what made you really get into you know, basketball and all that stuff. Okay, well, I am from Kansas City, Missouri. I'm actually a military brat, so there's really nowhere that I'm from from. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in Detroit. I was raised in Germany, um, lived in South Dakota, lived in Louisiana, lived in Kansas. And when my dad uh, ultimately retired uh, from the military, we ended in Missouri. So Kansas City, Missouri is what I consider as home. Um, grew up with an all sports family. I hated sports. <laughs> my oldest brother played baseball. My middle brother played football and basketball. He actually attended Grambling University. Uh, my mother played basketball and my dad of course was in the military so he was highly active. So I was the little princess girl. Um, at everybody's events you'd find me over on a field somewhere or under the bleachers playing with my friends, not concerned about the event going <laughs> on <laughs> at all. Um, and it was as I got older, uh, my dad passed away when I turned 13 and he always wanted me to play sports because my mom played basketball. She actually played professional and he wanted me to play sports and I never wanted to play. And so when he passed away, it just kind of became the, a thing for me to do. Um, I didn't want to go home after school and he wasn't there anymore. So the only activities after school were sports. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I got into basketball. Um, and everybody was like, oh, she's not gonna make it. She likes to get her hair done, <laughs> she likes to get her nails done. Um, but I made it. And because I was told that I wouldn't, that's what pushed me to do it. Um, so go through high school, have a great, great career in high school for just starting to play at the age of 14. And I remember um, my junior year, it was the end of my sophomore going into my junior year. Um, I was really good at volleyball. And my mother came to me and was like, I think you should quit basketball and play volleyball uh, because you're good at that. And I was like, oh, so I'm not good at basketball? <laughs> right. And she's like, no, you got some work to do. And so I took, I made it a mission. Um, I went to summer camps. My cousin who like was Miss Basketball, like ball was life for real. Um, I started hanging out with her more and going to camps with her, um, got on her AAU team. And by the end of my senior year, I had five division one offers uh, to go play basketball in college. Um, coming out of high school, I, I had a long talk with my mom about, you know, which way should I go? Because my cousin actually attended Oklahoma State University, mm -hmm. and at the time they were recruiting me also, and they had offered me a scholarship. And I had, the, the campus was basically like a second home because my cousin was there, so we were always down there for her games and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I verbaled to them, um, but I, I was always honest with the coaches that I didn't know if I'd be able to leave home because me and my mom were so close. Mm -hmm. um, subsequent to my dad passing away and when it came down maybe three weeks before school was supposed to start I remember telling the coaches I wasn't going to be able to come and so I told my mom if I choose another school you have to attend every game and so I chose a school that was in the city it was Rockhurst University which was a division two school at the time and um, didn't have a great basketball experience there, but I had a really good coach and kind of the unfortunate, fortunate thing for me, she got a new job at Missouri Southern State University and she asked me to go with her and I did, which was about two hours south of Kansas City. Um, and in the four years that I played, my mom didn't miss one game. Um, she went to Hawaii twice with us um, as a player and then she went a third time as a coach when I became a coach. Um, but following my coach or basketball playing career, my coaches wanted me to be a coach and I never wanted to be a coach. Mm. I said I didn't want to deal with student athletes attitudes, I didn't want to deal with parents, all the headaches that I knew my coaches dealt with. Um, so I had an internship with the Women's Sports Foundation uh, founded by Billie Jean King in New York and after my stint with that I knew I wanted to be a coach because um, it allowed me to be kind of on the administrative side of it, the grassroots side of it and I just knew I wanted to coach. Um, and I wasn't sure what level, but I knew I was a bit too competitive for the levels that we were working with. So mm -hmm. I wanted to be in college. And ironically, the very coach who recruited me to Oklahoma State helped me get my first coaching job. Wow. Yeah, so I started at the junior college level for a year. Um, second year, I went back and coached a year where I played at Missouri Southern. Um, and then I was able to go back home at, to the University of Missouri in Kansas City. I was there for five years, and then I went out to Kent State 
in Ohio for three years, and then God brought me to this place, University of New Orleans, uh, which is back where my roots are because all of my family is from Louisiana. Oh, wow. So, yeah, definitely been around the globe a time yeah. or two <laughs> to end up back at home. <laughs> Full circle. Yes. So you talked about your experiences as an athlete, you know, going through what you went through. Um, but how would your experiences, you know, as, as like a college coach, like what would you describe it as? Um, it's definitely been um, purpose driven for me mm. uh, because I don't feel like I have a job mm. and I don't even look at it like this is my career. Um, I just, in a sense, this is what I was supposed to do. Mm. And like I said, I didn't want to be a coach, but I definitely believe God took me the path I needed to go to see this is where I belong. And every year, no matter how the year goes, no matter the ups, the downs, um, I'm always ready for the next year. And I'm excited about it. So that's how I know like, it, it's really purpose driven for me. Right, yeah, of course. Um, you know, we're in Black History Month and you know, we we're really just making a lot of progress slowly, but it's progress. And a big thing about Black History Month is representation. So uh, what does representation like mean to you? Like, why do you think it matters? Or do you think it matters? So what are your thoughts on that? I think representation is huge um, because just uh, it's human nature to, to go along the paths that you see and not necessarily what people say. Um, you know, way back and before uh, on television and just in life, you'd only see the black people as the maid or the help or the janitors, which there's nothing wrong with those professions, but um, in, in retrospect, it's not the highest level. You didn't see them being the president or the CEOs or the people in positions of power. So it, I think it gave us um, sort of an inferior feeling. Yes. Um, and even when I began coaching as a young coach, um, the black female coaches were assistants who recruited. Right. And as I went through, I got to my third year and I was with the first time head coach at my first division one job. And it was very important to me and I had the conversation with her. Um, I didn't want to be labeled as just a recruiter. Um, I definitely wanted to be well-rounded and able to do all parts of the job. Mm -hmm. and, and she was someone who totally understood that and bought into it and made sure that, you know, every aspect of the program um, I was able to have a hand in. And, and just throughout the years, um, it's gotten better and better. Um, I do remember also at that time, there weren't many black head female coaches um, in, in college or even like in high school or in AAU circuit. Um, you mostly see men, you see some black men, but it was mostly male. Um, but in the college world, I remember in particular, um, Coach Nikki, Nikki Fargus, who's at LSU at the time was Nikki Caldwell. And the women who were head coaches, they wore kind of the power suits um, and kind of dressed like the, the men did. Mm -hmm. um, but Nikki Caldwell at the time um, was the first all black female staff that dressed what I define as women. Mm -hmm. um, they wore their hair done up nicely like I do. They wore nice outfits, um, fitted clothes. They looked like women, they wore heels. Um, and that was important to me. And so I stopped trying to wear the pants suits all the time. Yeah. Like when I dressed how I felt comfortable. Yeah. Um, that, I know that was only because I saw that. Um, and I didn't see UCLA until they were in the NCAA tournament. So that was definitely important. Um, Coach Stringer, definitely major, major history maker um, for black women um, in our society. Um, but for me, um, Black Excellence started at home with my mom. My mom is someone that uh, she just embodies everything to me uh, as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, a protector, a friend. She's everything. My mom played professional basketball herself. Um, but as a kid, my mom picked cotton when she was a kid. Um, and then she got to go to school. And I remember having a conversation with her asking her, you know, why didn't you um, play more sports as a, a young child? And she said, because she just didn't know about it. She's from the country, and, mm -hmm. and they just weren't informed about sports or that they could. And she said she knew nothing about a scholarship. It was actually her and her sister were playing in a park, and this lady saw them and offered her a scholarship to play at Southern University. Wow. And so she played there, but through some life changes, didn't finish school. Um, she had children. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but once she, after she had my second brother, um, she got back into professional sports. My dad was in the military, and she played for the Air Force, so she played pro-am ball. Um, and then I came along, <laughs> and that kind of ended her career as far as basketball. But she still teases me to this day. She scored 40 points in a game. She says, I never scored 40. 
but you know, it's okay. Oh. I told it in, uh, overseas they didn't play defense. Right. So that's my excuse. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, but even after that, my mom's just she's dealt with so much. She became a single mom. She was with my dad through his cancer, with my dad through his death, um, became a single mother. And as I reflect now as a mother, I know fully what she went through um, for her children and yeah. didn't understand it back then as a child. And it's just at times when I get frustrated or I doubt myself and I ask my mom, she's my number one supporter, but she's also my biggest critic. Mm -hmm. And I know if I take anything to her, she's going to say yes or no. And she has yet to tell me no. She's like, there's a way you can do it. Um, so when I don't see it in the world, I definitely see it at home. And that's black excellence to me. Um, one experience I have recently with my son, there's this book I bought him and it's titled, I, I Believe I Can. And in the book it has um, several different uh, ethnicities of children in the book and throughout the stories it paints pictures. And at the very end of the book, it has all of the kids in one big group setting. And there's a little black girl and there's a black boy, Hispanic, Asian, Caucasian, all of that. And um, I was just watching him read through the book himself and we got to the end and he pointed at the little black girl and he said, that's mommy. And he pointed at the little black boy and said, Elijah. And the Hispanic little boy is one of his really good friends at school. He named him. And it just dawned on me, like, and he was only two. Yeah. I said, if my child can look at a book and see himself, like, representation truly matters in the world because that means he's going to look at the world and look for himself. Right. And so having someone that looks like us in the proper positions, whether it be a janitor or the president of the United States, I think representation definitely matters. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you for your time. I really I appreciate it. Absolutely. Okay.